Hi, I'm David Lasky, and as part of the Exterminator City Comic Convention, I'm going to interview mini comic artist John Porcelino, who uh, has been making mini comics of the same title, King Cat, since 1989, and is one of the best known mini comics artists in the world. He also does distribution. He's involved in music or has been involved in music and um, many other things that we might talk about. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, John, thank you for joining me here thank on you. Zoom. Yeah. I'm coming thank from the so Midwest. Much. Yes, from the cold Midwest. It's a sunny but cold day here, December 1st. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Um, you are putting the final touches on your 80th issue of King Cat, which mm -hmm. just blows my mind because I've never done 80 of anything. <laughs> um, you probably have. You just haven't thought about it that way. Probably. Uh, is, is there any yeah. uh, anything you want to tell us about what we can expect in the new issue? Mm. It's pretty domestic. I think, I, you know, when I started, uh, I work, I, you know, at this point, I'm only getting about one issue out per year, which I'd like to be able to improve my productivity a little bit. But, um, you know, it, it's hard to balance everything I'm trying to do. And then, of course, this year was very hard in a lot of other ways. Um, but when I started, uh, stacking the pages up and kind of looking at them all together i i think it's I'm, I'm pretty pleased with it i think it's a pretty kind of personal um statement about the last year you know year and a half or so and uh how i've dealt with that and the way it's impacted things around here and stuff. Um, you know, most of it is a little, uh, it's pretty uh, illusional or not not really directly. Uh, there's a few direct references to COVID and Trump and stuff like that. But, um, uh, you know, it's, it's it, when I looked at them as a whole, I was like, okay, this makes sense that these are the comics that I drew this year. You know, it's, it's very, uh, mostly pretty withdrawn there's a lot of there's a lot of stories about time passing uh um people getting older things changing and trying to cope with that you know or come to terms with that i think so uh, i i felt once i i, I got I was really burned out and really depressed in the second half of the summer. And I, I, I had everything drawn and just kind of sat there on my drawing table for a couple of months. I just didn't have the gumption to sit down and deal with it. But then when I did, like I say, it, it, it kind of made sense to me all of a sudden. I kind of got excited. I thought like, this is, this is a pretty, this will be a good personal document for me of, of this time. I think it's pretty apt. So we'll see. Cool. And hearing that from a lot of people that they just have not been able to draw this year, or at least for certain time periods, they they went without drawing. Yes, I, I've had my moments as well. Yeah, there were. I mean, there definitely. I think we we all artists usually have that um, lingering doubt of what am I doing this for. <laughs> You know, and and when and when the stuff that's going on in the greater world at large is so serious and so um, intense, it can be. It, it makes that question, I think, come to the forefront of a lot of artists' minds. Like, why am I'm sitting here trying, like, or whatever, you know? And yeah. um, well, the world is on fire, and yes, just yeah, in my room but going. you know, this, you know. That's our job as artists is to respond to to our lives, whatever form it takes, you know. And so 
I, I get kind of mired in that sometimes, but at this point, I've been through the process of battling that question so many times over and over again, you know, in my in my life as a as an artist that I, I kind of I, I know what the answer is. I know the question keeps popping up, but I know what the answer is. It's just a matter of of allowing myself to accept the answer, which is, you know, you don't cut yourself off from reality, but reality is also that this is this is your job on this planet is to is to create this stuff and and it it has a you know hopefully in the best case scenario it has a positive effect on on people you know and so i you know i thought about that when i thought well maybe the world needs a king cat <laughs> right now, you know, I, sh I should better get off my butt. And that, that was kind of, I don't know what prompted it, but I, I kind of, I had that realization one morning. I was just like, you know, it's time to stop uh, avoiding this work and just jump into it and get it done and put it out in the world because, you know, the world could use something, something positive, you know, so. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. Almost done. I, I go so slowly now, though. I mean, stuff that used to take me two or three days takes two or three weeks, if I'm lucky nowadays. You know, I just don't have the energy or stamina really to like, like you were saying, stay up all night and work on stuff. You know, I, I if I can get a couple hours of creative work in per day, I feel pretty good. You know, I mean, I, I wish I could get more, but, but you know, I just have to accept kind of that's where I'm at now in my life is it just things go things go a lot more slowly than they used to. But they keep moving, so. And uh, I guess I was curious, related to current events, like, I don't know, I, I look back at what I've drawn in the last year, and I think I should have been more political in my art, maybe, but it 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 felt more right to just maybe make art that helped me escape from. Sure, sure, point. and you know, and that's I mean that was a lesson that it took me a long, long time to come to terms with, because I'm a person that does not have much self-esteem, you know, or self-confidence, and I I. I spent so, so much of my time and energy in life looking for reasons why what I was doing wasn't good enough, you know? And the fact is there's, there are, there's a, a lot of artists out there that can do really amazing uh, politically focused work, you know, and, and kind of, get straight to the heart of the matter and express these kind of things and 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 that's great you know if you're not that kind of artist though and it's and when you say not that kind of artist it doesn't mean that you don't think about these things or aren't concerned about political matters or aren't worried about things or don't address those ideas in other parts of your life but maybe, you know, uh, that's just, you're just not that kind of artist, you know, and so mm -hmm. there's room for every kind of approach. I mean, there's, I mean, this, when I talk about the stories in the new King Gat, they're mostly stories about talking to my dogs, you know, or um, standing in the backyard and trying to find some moment of peace or some moment of, of, understanding or acceptance or, you know, there's a, a story about uh, going out and filling the bird feeders and how during quarantine that, that little ritual took on a real special significance to me. You know, it got me out of the house away from a TV or a Twitter news feed or whatever kind of garbage I was submersing myself in 23 hours a day and and got got me out doing something that was uh slow and peaceful and 
and gentle and and it became a real touchstone for me looking forward every every afternoon to going out and and filling up the bird feeders and so you know what that's what i mean is that the, the comics i did over the last year are like that they, they touch on these things but it's you know it's not it's not me carrying a sign or whatever and i'm not just to be clear, I'm not putting people down for walking in the streets and carrying signs. Of course, you know, I think that's necessary given the state of things in our world. But, um, you know, it's just, it, this is my way of responding to um, our new circumstances that we found ourselves in. And so, you know, like I, like I say, it, it's, it's taken me a long time to, to learn to accept that the way I make art or approach life or whatever is not going to be the same as everybody else. And, and that's great because, you know, everybody has a role to play. I like what you said a little bit earlier about how, uh, you know, you kind of know what your job is now as an artist and it, it, it all fits in with what you're saying. The really political artists know, like, this is my job. And you know, like, my job, your job is to chronicle your life. That's kind of what is happening in King Cat. Yeah. For and, years. I, and I do think, you know, not to put, like, make it into something, not to stretch things out too much. But I do honestly, I mean, as someone who came out of punk rock and DIY and the zine world and stuff, I just think making a zine, I've been saying this for 30 years, is inherently a political act, right? It's, it's, it's simply saying, I have a voice and it's a unique voice and I'm going to share it in a way that is low key and in a way that is very personal and in a way that is, um, you know, uh, set apart in however way, however different ways you can do it um, from the mainstream obsession with uh, money and uh, notoriety and fame and uh, social climbing and all this stuff. Um, you know, in, in there's- the, Yeah, in the last four years, all that's become like a 24 seven intense circus. So sure. If you can focus on going to the bird feeder and make comics about it, you have a victory over all that crap. <laughs> yeah, the garbage of the world. Yeah, so I mean, you know, when I, I, that's all I'm saying is that some, some artists, their work is more overtly political. Other artists, their work is more kind of quietly political. Um, you know, for some artists, their work isn't political at all. I, you know, I guess maybe, I don't know. But, um, you know, so I'm, I'm a, I, I feel aware to that. Um, like when you, uh, one of the things that's become really um, potent for me in the last six or seven years, I would say, is um, the realization that for me, there's been whole generations of people who have grown up with King Cat. I mean, I so I've been doing it coming up on 30, what, I, 31 or 32 years or whatever it is. Yeah. So, I mean, literally there are, people on this planet who started reading King Cat when they were 14 years old, right? And then, and, and they are still reading King Cat and they've got kids in college, whatever, you know? And, and as the, as the world has got so fast and you look at the internet, look at Twitter where like everybody is just every person on the planet is throwing into these battles and fighting over the most trivial, meaningless 
ideas. And for me, you know, zines and this kind of DIY culture were always a way, it, it was a social critique, right? It was a critique of the, our society at large, finding that world lacking in whatever kind of ways, and then striving to create an alternative social structure outside of that, that was more inclusive, that was less sexist, that was less racist, that was less cruel, that was less obsessed with profit and all these things, right? And so it's, it's, I thought a lot about how this little thing that I've done just by the nature of continuing to do it in spite of any adversity or discomfort or things has carved out a little corner of this world. And there's a lot of people to whom that little corner is important, you know, and, um, and I owe, I owe those people a lot because they're that community that I always was looking for, right? You know, it's, it's, I, I was alone, I felt weird, I felt isolated and I tried to create some kind of community or at least one sprung up around, around this world that I was involved in. And so more and more, the awareness of that community has really motivated me and kind of impacted the way I think. I mean, I don't know if anybody would know this, probably some people would, because I think some people grumble about it, but you know, the recent King Cats, the last seven or eight issues, there's more and more letters, you know? I think there's one issue where like a quarter of the whole book was a letters column. But that, you know, it's it, the letters column was always important to me, but it actually has taken on like a really like a, a focus for me where it's like, I, I, want, I want to include these other voices, right? I want to include the thoughts of the other people in this community around King Cat. And, um, you know, so that, I, I guess this, I'm just kind of babbling now, but those are the things I think about when I think about, you know, even though I'm not writing polemic, political, you know, strident comics, there is an inherent um, political nature to, to doing this kind of work. And- uh, That's very well said. Uh, oh, thanks. Uh, I, I'm influenced by you as a comics artist. Uh, and I don't know if you know this, but Greg Stump and I have been teaching, co-teaching comics classes for about 10 years. And we always show your work in class and say, look at how this guy gives you just the essential information you need in his art. Uh, and uh, every time I'm like, wow, you know, I got to be more like John Key. Well, <laughs> I want to don't... draw all this stuff. Um, it's, I, it doesn't mean I want to copy you, but, but I'm, you know, artistically, it's kind of wowed and influenced. But what you're saying now, I realize also politically or just in my life, I've been hugely influenced by the way you are and your attention to nature and just your consistency too, maybe in saying, I'm going to do many comics. I don't need to, whatever, have a TV show of my comic or <laughs> any of that. You don't need that. You, you're, you're doing the thing you need to do, I guess. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm- and That's an influence on you. Oh, I, thank you. I, I uh, you know, the, uh, one thing that I, I don't know if this is, I think it's apropos to what you were saying, but one way that, one thing that I think about a lot is like when I was 13 or 14 or whatever it was, and I wanted to learn how to make music, right? I got a guitar and a Mel bass, fun with the guitar songbook, you know, and I learned how to play O Clementine, Darling Clementine on my guitar. And I got into punk rock and I was like listening to bands like Husker Du, you know, and I was like, wow, this music really speaks to me. I'd like to be able to, to speak, to use this, speak my thoughts through music but you know i i mean of course a guitarist like bob mole from husker du he's like a genius guitarist right you know he's and and i was listening to stuff like that and then i was like listening to the beatles and stuff and it's just like i i don't know how to write songs like this you know and then i heard flipper the band flipper which if you've never heard them, you can now in this day, you can Google it and watch videos of them or whatever, you know, their songs were like consisted of three or four notes at this sludge pace, you know, and just these like kind of shouted anthemic lyrics that just kind of like, there was not necessarily a melody involved or anything. And when I heard Flipper, that was my gateway because I was like, Husker do the Beatles. I probably can't do that, but I can do this. I know I can do this. I know I can play like three notes in a row over and over again, really slowly and write some funny rhyming lyrics over the top of it. And, and that's what I got. That just allowed my foot in the door into the world of music, right? And, and now that I'm older and know more about music, I can look at Flipper and I could say, yeah, it sounds really simple. And it is really simple. I'm not trying to make it them into Mozart or something, but it's it's a, harder than it looks, right? Because they're doing something really unique. The elements that they're using are very simplified, but um, they're doing it in, very well. They're doing what they do very well. And um, when I do workshops and stuff, I realize that that's what my job is. Like, I don't want to teach anybody how to make comics. I want them to learn how to make their own comics their own way, right? But what I can do is give people that permission, right? Or give, I could present this in such a way that people can go, oh yeah, I can do that, you know? And so certainly starting out, that wasn't part of my, thinking with King Cat. I just did what I did and, and whatever came natural, I did it. But over time, again, like I can look and I can see that that's part of my motivation for doing this too, is I, I want, if I can be that flipper for some young cartoonists, right? You know, if I can be the person who some young cartoonists is looking for a way to express themselves and they see my work and realize oh, wait, I can do this. Like, look, you can see exactly what's happening here because there's no, he's not hiding anything or, you know, or like, yeah. then I consider that a success, you know, because then that person's going to start making their own work and they're going to add another voice to this conversation. And, and I, I realize that like when I do workshops or teach classes and stuff, that's, it's kind of what, my job is when I'm doing that kind of work is, is just to tell people, go ahead and do, do it, you yeah. know, stop yeah. thinking about it and worrying about it and feeling like you can't do it because you can do it and just do it. And that's, that's the only way to do something is by doing it. <laughs> yeah. Making comics can be so complex and difficult, but it can also be so easy if you let it be sure easy. sure and 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 you know once you get you know even if you are trying to make nice free and easy comics you're going to run into times where it's going to you're going to want to scream right but that's the way that's the way things are anything you do but you know and even if it's not that easy to do even 
all you all all I'm accomplishing is making it look easy enough that somebody feels the confidence to put pen to paper for the first time, you know. And later on, 10 years later, they can they can go, wait a second, this isn't as easy as they told me it was gonna be. But it, at that point you got 10 years in and you're probably still, so. yeah. Um, well, this has been great. I should probably wrap up this interview, but I want to do a little plug for you. I guess Drawn and Quarterly is reissuing a lot of your books in new editions. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I draw King Cat and self-publish it, my zine form thing, and then um, for the last 15 years or so, I've been working with Drawn and Quarterly in Montreal, and they publish book collections then of the older issues and um, so uh, there's three of those um, older collection of mine have been out of print for a little bit. And so we uh, worked to, to do new editions of them. They're basically the same content wise. There's a few little things that are different with a couple of them, but um, uh, you know, just brought them back into print. So that was, this is something that was always real important to me. Um, because my work is so much about small moments, which is fine. And you can take them at face value. You could pick up, if you've never read a King Cat, you can pick up the new issue. It's not like you need to have read the previous 79 issues to jump into the narrative or continuity. You know, it, it, each, each story can be read on its own, but it is also true that the more of it you read, it kind of adds a richness, I think, to the quality of the stories because things refer back to each other and there's patterns emerge and things. And so for me, you know, all, all art, all cartoonists probably want to have their work in print all the time. But for me, it was like, it's like almost like a necessity. Like I, I, I need somebody to be able to pick up in Cat 80 and be like, oh, wow, okay, and go back and be able to pick up these books and read the earlier material and stuff. It's just like, it's like crucial to me artistically. So I was very pleased that we were able to, to work it out to keep the books in print. Like, so those are the new editions. I think they're supposed to be out in February or something like that. Like they've, they've been printed. They're on the slow boat from wherever it is that they print books nowadays. It's great because if someone likes your work, they've got 31 years of back issues that would be really hard to track down without <laughs> these books existing. So I'm glad Toronto Quarterly and you. Oh, sure. I mean, so much, so many of those, the early King Cats were printed in like, it, you know, it print runs of 20 copies or whatever. So, you know, it, it's, yeah, I appreciate it. It, it. it makes me happy to know that the works out there like that. So. How many can I ask what the print run will be of issue 80? Uh, well, I actually thought a little bit about cutting it back because um, there's no shows and I don't know when there will be shows and um, the, the retail structure of comics is in dire straits and stuff too, you know, so, but um, the last 10 or so years I've well, maybe the last five or six years, I guess I've done 2,000 copies. Um, and that probably the 2,000 print run, copy print run, maybe half of them or like 1,100 go out right away within the first couple months, either subscribers or Patreon people or shops and a few other distributors and stuff like that. And then, um, you know, again, I like to keep the older work available. So by printing that quantity, I'm able to put, you know, a couple boxes in my storage unit and sell them over the next five or six years um, and keep, keep these issues circulating. Um, so I, I am going to just go ahead and do 2000. I might, might be sitting on a lot of these <laughs> for a while, but um, hopefully not. But yeah, so I do about, I do 2000 or so nowadays Great. that's fantastic right. I, Good. I do print runs of about 200 <laughs> yeah well i mean that's great and what the thing is i used to do print runs of 200 
and I just run out and I go back to the copy shop and print up another 200 or 250 or whatever if I needed to. And at some point, just it became economically more feasible and to so much work to keep reprinting things that it just yeah. made sense to me to just print a big stack of them. And even if it takes 10 years to sell, I'm, ha I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm not worried, you know, I'd, I'd rather just have them there if somebody needs them. So, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's, I mean, the first King Cat was a print run of 18 copies, you know, so. There's um, a lesson for young comic creators, stick with the same title, <laughs> build your readership for 30 years. And... Yeah. It, I mean, it's true. It, I mean, it, it is true. Um, if you do something long enough, hopefully you get good at it and hopefully it gives people enough time to notice <laughs> that you're doing this thing, you know? because it's very hard to get people's attention sometimes, but if you keep at it, it usually bears fruit. Yeah, so I'll tell people uh, to look for your new issue. The easiest way to find it is maybe through your Patreon page. Yeah, I have a Patreon page or uh, mydistrospitandahalf.com. All, all that stuff will be available there and it's you know easy to order online that way. This has been such a, a nice conversation and I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, very. I'm very happy to do it. Thank you. All right. Take care, John. All right. So long. Stay safe. You too.